Hello and welcome back to the channel that tries to inspire you to get up off the couch and into the kitchen. A few weeks back, I had someone using the handle World of Troy make a request for a dip considering that the sporting season was around the corner. I don't watch much sports anymore, but I know some of you guys do. Thank you. I'm assuming your name is Troy. Thank you, Troy, for making that request. I think I may have met you several months back, and that's you. Thanks for hanging around, and thanks for making that request. I'm not just going to make one dip for you. I'm going to show you how to make three separate dips for your sporting needs. So those of you new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and let's get started here on Cook! Don't be lazy. Let's start off with a medium-sized pot. So what are we going to make for this recipe? A bean dip. Next thing we need to do is set our stove to about a medium low, which is about a three. Real simple recipe. First thing we need, some refried beans. Just like that. I don't like it when it stands tall, so I'm going to knock it over. There we go. Next thing we need, this is two cups cheddar, Monterey Jack cheese, shredded. If you can't find the combination, one cup of cheddar cheese, one cup of Monterey Jack cheese. Get that in there. Sour cream. Now, I don't need the full container. This is 16 ounces. I need most of it, but not all of it. This has already been used. So, that's going to give me roughly three quarters of this container. And that's roughly about what I need. So, get that in there. A real simple but tasty recipe. Some picante sauce. I'm going to use mild because I don't want this overly spicy. So I'm going to use some mild picante sauce. This is 16 ounces. I don't need all 16 ounces. I need roughly about a cup. Um, a cup is, last I checked, about 8 ounces, I think. So I'm going to use about half of this. And that looks to be about half. Next thing, cream cheese. This is an eight ounce container. I don't need all eight ounces. I need roughly, maybe a little less than half or so. I'm gonna eyeball it. Y'all know I love to eyeball things. Little chili powder. I'm going to eyeball that too. Hey, what happened to my... There we go. Just a sprinkle. This is to taste. So you find that after you make it, it needs a little bit more chili, add more to it. I'm eyeballing it roughly a tablespoon or so. And a little bit of cumin. Ground cumin. Same thing. Eyeball it. Just a little sprinkle, not too much. So what I'm going to do with this, break up my refried beans. Look at that, cheese is already melting. But I'm going to stir this and get this all mixed in. Now you don't want this on high. You want this on low. Like I said, I've got mine set to a three. So I'm just going to stir this yummy goodness. And I'm going to slowly let the heat, or let the heat slowly meld everything together. Now the color looks a little off, but that's because not everything's melted yet. So it's starting to come together. It's best if you work with your soft, your cream cheese already being somewhat room temperature. 
because we're using a hot component in here. You don't want to just throw a, a hard, cold, cold, solid piece of cream cheese. So let that cream cheese sit out for a little bit to soften up a bit so that this process goes a little quicker. So that already looks like I can dip, dip into it, but look at that, that cream cheese is still a clump. So I'm gonna let this sit here and kind of simmer at a low temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes. You can go longer, it's not gonna kill it because all we're kind of doing is heating up the ingredients. But you don't want to go for like an hour. Just a good 10, 15, 20 minutes or so. You're just warming it up. Make sure the cheese melts and make sure that the, the uh, cream cheese softens up and blends in with all the ingredients. Bean dip recipe done. What's not done is a plate up scene which you guys are used to watching right after I do something. Today we're going to save the plate up scene until after all three dips are done. Next recipe, as easy as the first one, so let's get to it. So we need to do a little bit of prep work. Cut up an onion, cut up a lime, get you some cilantro, three cloves of garlic, and if you want a little heat, a jalapeno. All right, we need a food processor. Throw in your jalapeno, throw in some cilantro, get in there. Force in your onion. Man, I need a bigger food processor. This little teeny tiny guy ain't cutting it. Throw in your garlic cloves. We need a can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. Looks to be about 10 ounces. How this is going to fit, I don't know, but let's get it in here and try. It's falling everywhere. Oh my gosh, I really need a bigger food processor. Get in there. Let's get this bad boy blended. I'll be honest guys. So I forgot to record the audio. I forgot to turn on my microphone. So you get to deal with these sound effects now. <laughs> Sounds like the real thing, huh? Now that we made a little bit of room, we can throw in the remainder of the uh, the tomatoes. Man, I had a brain fart there. Look at that. Almost perfect. Just barely enough space. Oh, let's for not forget about our lime. Let's squeeze in the juice of our lime. Squeeze. Squeeze. I know it's a little awkward, but like I said, I'll admit to when I screw up. No microphone, so this is a voiceover. Squeeze. Squirt. Squeeze. Squirt. Squirt. Squeeze. All right. What is this? Honey. We need some honey. All right, we're going to eyeball this. We're gonna use about a good, that much. That's how much we're gonna use. All right, hold on, let me take my deep breath here. <gasps> oh. <coughs> oh, oh my gosh. So this is what it looks like. Nice and purdy and messy, but we ain't done yet. We got one more little step to go. 
All right, so we need a container. Normally I'd use a bowl, but I don't have any bowls. So I'm just gonna use this pot here. It's a small pot. Um, we're not gonna heat anything though. I'm just using it strictly as a container. We're gonna pour in our good mixture from our little teeny tiny food processor. And we need one can of diced tomatoes. Now this is a little chunky, and that's okay. We want a little chunk in our dip. What's taking me so long? Come on. Oh, we need salt. Throw in some salt. I think at this point I'm realizing I have a problem with the microphone. So I kind of lost track. So it looks like a lot of salt, but it's really not too much salt. At least I didn't think it was too salty. So I'm going to stir this, and I think I'm about to fix my microphone. So let's get back on track with the mic. Now remember, I'm not heating anything up. I'm simply using this pot as a container for me to mix this because I'm out of bowls, believe it or not. So don't heat it up. doesn't need to be heated up. The only heat we should be worried about is just how heat or how much heat this salsa has. That's pretty good. Woo! <clears throat> a little on the spicy side. So talking about spice, if you want a mild salsa, get rid of the seeds from the jalapenos. The seeds is where the heat is at. If you want a spicier salsa, keep those seeds in there. Man, that's some good salsa. One more recipe to go, and it's as easy as this one was. Let's get to it. This recipe, cheese dip. So we need a small to medium sized pot. Put your stove on about a three or a four. We need a cup of half and half. We need about a tablespoon of cornstarch. I don't believe in tablespoons. I don't know even know if I own one, so I'm just gonna grab a regular, whatever you kind of want to call this. What? This is my spoon. So I'm just gonna throw some of that in there. Mix it in. Now this part is very important. Get yourself a block of cheese. I'm using medium cheddar cheese. I'm using a block. You don't want to use shredded cheese. Shredded cheese will not work the same as a block of cheese. I have went ahead and sliced and diced up the cheese into very thin slices. The reason you don't want to use shredded cheese is because that shredded cheese has been treated with chemicals, preservatives, whatever it is to prevent it from sticking together. That, that chemical preservative or whatever you want to call it is going to make it harder for that cheese to properly melt. So get yourself a block of cheese and shave it down yourself. So as the heat climbs a little bit, we don't want to bring this to a boil. Low heat. We're just so slowly going to stir. It's going to take a few minutes, but eventually this will all melt. So give it a little stir, stir. You want to make sure that cheese is fully melted. Now, once the cheese is fully melted, you can go ahead and turn off your stove. One thing you're going to notice is that cheese seems a little liquidy and that's perfectly fine. As that cheese comes to a cool, it's going to thicken up. I don't know what else to say other than time to plate up. The only thing left is a big old bag of chips so you can start diving into these dips. Mr. Troy. 
Thank you for the recommendation. I'm sure you and your guests are going to enjoy these dips. They taste very good. For the rest of you, I'll see you guys next week here on Cook. Don't be lazy.